So as the uh, title may suggest, I'm going to devote this, this one video to answer questions and tackle questions in the subject of X-ray and X-ray crystallography. And uh, I'm actually solving this as I go, so you will see how I do it in real time. And it isn't, it isn't so, so you'd be able to copy uh, the way I do it or to just do it the same way. It's just to give you an information as to what's, what's a technique that could be used to solving these questions. So let's get started with some true or falses. And the way I do those is that if I need to correct a sentence to make it sound reasonable to me, then I mark a false. Let's see if we can get it going. When an electron loses its kinetic energy through a series of interactions, and here we're really talking about breaking radiation. So I'm just going to mark breaking. And this is what I do in a test. I just write over and say breaking. More than one x-rays may be generated. And, and if we're looking at that one drawing or that one depiction that we copied uh, down in the presentation, you can actually see a series of atoms. See a series of atoms. You can actually see an, an electron bouncing from them. And with each interaction, you will see a photon being emitted in breaking radiation uh, mechanism. So let's try and read it again. When an electron loses its kinetic energy through a series of interactions, more than one x-rays may be generated. And I would have to agree with that. Let's can we, can we keep moving. Annihilation occurs when the electron imparts all of its energy to other electrons, thus generating a vacancy in the k shell. I'm going to have to read it again. Annihilation occurs with the electron. And annihilation really means a pair of electron and positron. Electron and positron. So annihilation occurs when the electron imparts all of its energy to other electrons. I would say no. I would say no. This, this should ring false right out the bat because there's no mentioning of the positron. So there's no annihilation. I'm going to keep going. The maximal frequency, and by I'm just going to write it F max because this is what I would do is generated when the electron loses its kinetic energy through a series of interactions. And let's just say that our electron has some sort of kinetic energy, 100 kinetic energy. And let's just say it's going through one interaction, and it loses 20% of its kinetic energy. And now it has 80% left. And now it can lose maybe 30%. And it would have, let's see, 50% of its initial kinetic energy left. And we can keep on going, and the photon that's going to be emitted is going to be equivalent to 20% of the energy loss, or here's going to be equivalent to 30% of the energy loss. But I'm only, only going to get the maximal frequency or the maximal energy of the photon when all of the energy is imparted in one event. So the maximal frequency is generated when the electron loses its kinetic energy through one event. Kinetic energy in one event. So if I'd have to fix it and say through one event, and I'd read it again, it would make sense. The F max is generated when the electron loses all its kinetic energy in one event. So I'd have to mark a false for this one. False. Very good. And we're just going to keep on going. The attenuation coefficient gives us information about the property of the attenuating material. And that's exactly what it does. It gives us the, uh, the characteristic attenuation uh, measurement, you can say. That means that if I have one material, material A, and material B, and if material A is a better absorber, its attenuation coefficient is going to be, its attenuation coefficient for A is going to be higher than the, the attenuation coefficient for B. So it does give me information about the property of the attenuating material, or to what extent, to what extent does, it, does it attenuate radiation. And maybe, maybe I forgot to mention, but I do encourage you to pause this video to pause this video and try and do this on your own. So if I forgot to do that and tell you to do that, well, you maybe should have done, but do it now. Pause this video and work it on your own. All right, let's see if we can solve this deal. We will, we will observe a blank spectrum when the electron loses its kinetic energy through a series of interactions. And really, when we're talking about a series of interactions, it's really breaking radiation. We already discussed that. Breaking radiation, breaking radiation is a series of interactions. And really, breaking radiation should coincide. It just pop to us. When we say breaking means continuous, continuous. And so this would be a continuous spectrum. Now, read it again. We will observe a continuous spectrum 
when the electron loses its kinetic energy through a series of interactions. Very good. And in an exam, I just write breaking here. I just write breaking here, just, just to make it easier for me. Very good. Let's switch colors here. The most energy requiring attenuation mechanism is something. And we know of three attenuation, attenuation mechanisms. We know of the photo effect, photo effect. We know of the Compton, Compton effect. And we know of the pair production. The pair production is kind of the culmination of, uh, of the most dramatic event. And this, require, and this actually uh, features annihilation, positron, uh, positron electron pairs, gamma rays. And this would actually require 1.02 mega electrovolts calculated by the Einstein's energy mass equivalency formula. And this, this shouldn't be too difficult because the, the pair production event is really standing out. It's really quite on its own. So this is good. The Lau equations, and this actually refers to X-ray crystallography, X-ray crystallography. The Lau equations are blank, but can be resolved by turning the sample into something foreign. And this, this is also in the minimals. Uh, but if I'm trying to figure out on logic, based on logic, the Lau equations are something but can be resolved. So if, if something, if something is, uh, is kind of preventing me from being resolved, that would mean that I would have too less information and too many variables. And this is called overdetermined, overdetermined, overdetermined. So the Lie equations are, in fact, overdetermined, but can be resolved by turning the sample into powder form. And this is in the minimal. Or they can also be resolved by rotating the sample. This is one of the two ways. A vacancy in the K-shell could be followed by either a blank X-ray or blank. Let's see. Oh, very interesting. So this is actually somewhat of a trick question because we know of two different mechanisms that feature a vacancy in the K-shell. And one of them is characteristic X-ray. Characteristic X-ray. I'm just going to put it here. Characteristic. And the other one is actually the same mechanism, only we don't get we don't get an X-ray, we get an electron bounced off. And this is Auger, the Auger electrons. And just as a reminder what it is, if I have a nucleus here and I have maybe an electron here and an electron here, they're slightly bigger than the nucleus, but it doesn't matter. If I have one electron moving very, very fast and imparts all of its kinetogy to this electron, maybe this electron now that's in the K shell is going to be bounced off, it's going to be ionized, and it's going to be gone. And then, and then this electron is going to drop down and fill in the gap. So let's just do it here real quick. So this electron drops down and fill this gap. And then it imparts all of its energy instead in, a, in an X-ray. It imparts all of its energy to another electron here that's in an orbital. And this one is going to be flying out. So this is Auger. And really, this is not, this is not me explaining the process. I already did it in previous videos. This is just a refresher. So if any of the things that I go through here as, as just a redundancy to explain the mechanisms, and if they're not really well, well understood to you, you can go back to the videos and, and give it a go. And now we're, we have finally reached the relation analysis, which usually are the most annoying, so I kept them for last. And again, pause this video now if you want to work on them. And even if you don't, do it. <laughs> All right. So let's get started on what's going on here. And with relation analysis, what I like to do is I like to break it into two statements and address them as true or false and then see if there's some sort of a connection. So let's see what we have here. The characteristic X-ray is characteristic of the material of the cathode, of the material of the cathode. And really what I have in my X-ray tube, this is my X-ray tube. I have a heated cathode on one side that, that liberates electrons towards, towards an anode towards an anode. And at the anode really is where are the X-ray is generated. And this would lead us to believe that this is true because you say characteristic and it's characteristic of the material, this makes sense. But it isn't really, it isn't, it doesn't really pertain to the cathode. It does not. Because the electrons do not interact with the cathode. They interact with the anode. So this would be false. This would be incorrect. And if I want to fix this, I just write here anode. anode. But this is still this is still false. All right. Characteristic X-rays follow a discrete spectrum. 
And characteristic X-ray really is a discrete a discrete spectrum. And the other type would be breaking, and breaking would be breaking would be a continuous. And this is just things that require repetition. We just need to know these things. So this is true. This is true. This is correct. Characteristic X-rays do follow a discrete spectrum. But we're going to keep on going. The lambda min is shifted. This is supposed to be a D. The lambda min is shifted towards shorter wavelength when the voltage difference in the cathode dis decreases. Okay, this is quite this is uh, this is quite the statement. And what I do here is instead of reading this really big statement again and wasting a bunch of time and other understanding, first of all, I kind of try and, and gather it up. Uh, voltage difference in the cathode decreases. So if I have voltage difference between the cathode, the cathode and the anode, anode, and it decreases, then I have less energy. So I'm just going to write here less energy. Hopefully it makes sense because the electrons are accelerating slower or not as fast because I've decreased, I've decreased the, uh, the voltage difference, so I have less energy. So what, what I need to understand is what is the lambda min uh, and where it is shifted when I have less energy. So lambda min is really, lambda min is really the same as saying frequency max. But really I'm going to stick to lambda min and I know that the shorter the wavelength, the more energy I have. So I'm going to write here shorter, shorter wavelength, more, more energy, more energy. And now I know that I have less energy. So if I have less energy, I need longer wavelength, longer lambda means less energy. All right, we're getting there, we're getting there. So we need the lambda min to shift towards the longer wavelengths. Lambda min is shifted towards the shorter here. So this means, this means, when the lambda min is shifted towards the shorter, this means I'm getting more energy. I'm getting more energy, and this doesn't really coincide with the difference decreasing. So I would say this is false. This is false. And if I wanted to fix this, I would say towards shorter, towards the shorter, shorter wavelengths when the voltage difference in the cathode decreases. Or no, this already says the same thing, so I'm just going to say longer. I just fixed it and wrote the same thing. So the lambda min is shifted towards the longer, longer wavelengths because longer wavelengths mean smaller frequency and less energy. It's just kind of messing around with the figures, but you need to get it in your mind. Frequency and lambda are inversely proportional, okay? This kind of needs to set in your mind. And the second statement, all of the kinetic energy of the electron could be imparted in a single event. And we already discussed this. We can have break-in radiation in which the electron loses its energy through a series of interactions. But we also have this, this idea of lambda min or F max, which is really the same thing, really the same thing, is when the electron loses all of its 100% in one event, and then we get the maximal frequency or the minimal wavelength. So all the kinetic energy of the electron could be imparted in a single event would be true. Very good. Hopefully this helped a little bit, and I'll see you in the next video.